one of the first things that a lot of homeowners have to tackle with their houses is siding replacement. I, I do it so often. And part of it is that for years, they were putting such crappy siding on houses and it absorbs water like a sponge and it rots like moss. <laughs> so I uh, found a the perfect person for us today out of Kansas City, Missouri, Mr. Stephen Glaze with, uh, he is a professional siding specialist and contractor. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Alex. I'm great. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm fantastic. Um, I end up replacing lots of siding and there's two different, real different uh, things that I find that I've noticed over the years. And one is when we're talking about production houses versus custom homes and the quality of really what I look at is what's behind the siding. Mm -hmm. And so why don't you give us an idea of what exactly, uh, let's start from the beginning. When, when does a homeowner need to get concerned about siding enough that it might need, they may think it may need to be replaced or have someone like you look at it? Well, usually it starts with, um, you know, they start to see some wood rot um, is usually where it starts or, or when they go to, you know, the paint is faded and, and so then they start to go look at repainting. <clears throat> and so I would say people, you know, come to us to reside their home for one of two reasons, either one, uh, it, it's a necessity that the wood is just rotted out and they've got it, they, you know, painting it and, and repairing it is, is just not, not really an option. It needs to be, um, needs to be replaced. Um, the other person that comes to us is someone that the siding is not rotted out because they've taken good care of it, but they, they also plan on staying the home for a long time. And so the cost of maintaining that siding and, uh, you know, repainting it every, you know, three to five years or however often they do it, um, you know, it starts to look like maybe if I went with something that um, was more, uh, required less maintenance mm -hmm. um, and came pre-finished. Um, it might make sense to, to replace it with something something along those lines. What are the now? Uh, I, I failed to mention at the opening. Stephen is an author. He has authored a book about siding, and so that's one of the reasons we wanted him on here. We like smart people on our show. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so we'll talk about your book in a few minutes. But what uh, one of the things that has changed so much is when we we went through this phase in the building industry it, and it really seems to me it started at least in my world around the late 80s and 90s when they were doing all sorts of experimental uh, things that were uh, it's fake but it looks like this you know and mm -hmm. go ahead and use and it's cheap it's really cheap builder go ahead and use it <laughs> right Let's talk a few minutes about some of the things that you've noticed that have changed from maybe the last 25, 30 years in product availability What and how much better or better things are now. Well, in, in our market, the new construction is dominated by um, uh, engineered wood, LP smart side. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you mentioned, there's a big difference between that product pre-1996 and post-1996. So prior to 1996, the way they did that is they would take the, the, the each individual wood chip and they would press it together and with glue and they'd make a board out of it. And then they'd treat the, the exterior of that board uh, for rot and, and seal it up so that, you know, wouldn't uh, absorb any moisture or whatnot. Um, and then what they found was once they went to install that board, they would cut it and that would open it up right up and then water would get in the seams or uh, wick up underneath it and get behind it. And it would just absorb that water like a, like a sponge, like you first spoke about, and it would just rot out from the inside. And so it was a real big problem. It was all kinds of class action lawsuits. And, uh, and, it was and one good. problem with, with that type siding, just, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, while yeah. I'm thinking about this one problem with painted siding is that just like in a lot of termite damage, you don't see it. You know, you the paint it gets up to the back of the paint mm -hmm. in a rock. It's you you can't see it until you right. see it bubbling. I mean, eventually you'll see the damage. 
But, uh, yeah, by the time you do see it, it it's really bad, mm -hmm. and, and and it's 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 too late. And so, um, with with that pr particular product, they reformulated. I think they've got a pretty good product now. Um, LP. They what they do now is they take each um, each wood chip and they they coat it in a marine grade resin, and, and so it's all you know waterproof basically. And they they um, press that together, and make a board. You still need to seal it when you cut open, but it, it just it's got more protectant uh for that type of, of rot and stuff so and that's what we see a lot of on new homes and um you know non-custom built homes or siding that hasn't been replaced that's usually what we're seeing a lot of um and or you've got the old masonite stuff that's just you know basically awful yeah just <laughs> nothing good to say about it just bad um and that stuff is real bad so that usually we have to take off uh completely and then put up um you know, new plywood, which is basically your, your OSB, your, your LP smart side, um, and then install our product, um, which we do a lot of different types of siding. I mean, we, we sell a lot of, uh, James Hardy fiber cement. We sell, uh, some high quality vinyl. Um, we, we do sell some LP smart side. Um, you know, there's some other products that we've, we've gotten into a little bit that, uh, you know, um, I'm talking about like, PVC and cellular PVC and things like that. So we've got, we've done, we do a little bit of, of everything. Um, you know, there, I don't know if there's one product that's just the perfect solution for every home. Um, but, um, I, know, I'm so no, I've noticed over the years, like I've tried all of them like you have. And when they first came out and they're, and they're selling them, they're, they're pitching them to us, uh, mm -hmm. the builder, they, I know they believe in their product. And so I don't think anybody's doing anything nefarious, but I know that there's a lot of times when it's a brand new product, it just has problems. Uh, for yeah. instance, they came out with the, the, I guess it's plat. I don't know what it is, plastic or, or plastic type, um, mm -hmm. trim and siding for the outside of houses. And it shrank, you know, it shrank mm -hmm. a quarter of an inch and, and you would, people would go, well, it's plastic. How can it shrink? Well, all of these things, still react to hot and cold regardless yeah. of what they're made of but we went from we went to um and i think because of great marketing we went to these cementatious this hardy type stuff mm -hmm. and one of the things that i've noticed over the years is not so much that the you know i'm not a huge i've never been a huge fan of the product but uh i can't get or i've had too many problems getting people to install it correctly that's been yeah. the problem with it. That is the that that is the issue. So, uh, quite honestly, that's the reason we stayed away from James Hardy as long as we did, is because as a business owner, I just didn't feel comfortable, you know, w with honestly with the guys that I had to to install that that hadn't done it before. And so, unless they were going to, you know, spend a lot of time training and effort and, and doing all that, and I just it wasn't going to do that because if you got a guy you know, that takes one shortcut, you know, he's making $20 an hour and he decides one day he's not going to install it exactly to manufacture specifications. And then three years later, that cost me $35,000 because wow. I got to reside their house. I just wasn't a risk I was willing to take. Or some of these other products, they're, they're a little more forgiving if you don't install them to manufacture specifications. Um, now, since then we've, we've hired some, some great crews that have, you know, had, 20 years experience installing James Hardy and, and they're certified uh, installers and they go through the training every year, continuing education. And so we've really gotten into it, but um, that is the issue. Uh, it's a great product, but it has to be installed to manufacture specifications or it will fail. I mean, you can't nail problem. it up with a trim gun. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. You, you definitely have to, um, you know, adhere to your clearances, you know, six inches off the, the ground, two inches off the roof you know, all of those things. And, you know, the guys, they, they carry a shoe polish bottle full of paint. So every time they make a cut edge, they're, they're touching that up and sealing it. And, you know, you've got to do all the, the things to install it correctly. And if you do, it's a great product, um, but there are products that are thing getting these, yeah. these guys to understand the, the things that they need to do with all of these products, because I think a lot of it is that they, they're not really responsible for the end result or, or the result two or three years down the road like we are and so it's also a lot of change for the contractor to have to learn these now I, I grew up in an era where we cut wood 
you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so That's right. we had good wood, we cut it, we put it up, we painted it and it lasted, you know, 60, 70 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we were replacing wood that had been there a hundred years. And now one of the, uh, uh, things with siding, one of the, the real issues with siding is what it's on. So a lot of the production houses built in the eighties and nineties, and maybe before then, they built, they, they put that siding, that masonite siding, that's what they were all using for a while. Um, and they put it right on the studs and mm -hmm. often I'll pull it off and there wasn't even paper behind it. They just plopped it right up on there. And I can't, you, you can tell a difference. Now I'll go in and, and put something behind that. I'll put OSB or I'll put an OSB, a new product, an LP product that's an OSB with a little foam on it, uh, mm -hmm. which is a fantastic product. And it really changes the performance of the house because you don't realize, you know, as a homeowner, you're living with this stuff. You don't realize how much wind is blowing up in those walls and how it's affecting the performance of your house. Some of these siding products tell you, oh, you don't have to put anything behind them. You can just put them right on the studs. I know Hardy told us that for a long time, and maybe it's right. Maybe that's what you don't have to do. What is your sort of rule, uh, rule of thumb when you're dealing with that situation? So the only product that we would nail directly to studs would be um, the LP uh, smart side panel, and it has to be the strand where it's structural. And, um, you know, because basically that is like, plywood and so that's that's what we would we would put house wrap up um over the studs and insulation and then we would uh install that product but every other product including james hardy we will not nail it direct to studs we have to put it over something solid i i'll tell you you talk about horror stories we did a job where we were replacing vinyl tearing off vinyl siding and putting up james hardy and i took off the vinyl siding and it was nailed direct to studs with no foam insulation, no house wrap, nothing. Like literally I'm looking at the, the bats insulation and their sheetrock wow. behind this vinyl siding. I couldn't believe it. Wow. Um, so we, that, and, you know, of course we put up the OSB uh, half inch plywood, you know, all the way around and then installed our house wrap. And, and sometimes we'll install um, insulation and then house wrap and then the siding. Sometimes we'll just do the house wrap and then the siding over the, uh, but it has to be solid surface. We don't, go direct to studs so your advice to a homeowner who's thinking about doing his own or mm -hmm. her own siding replacement what is your advice to someone that's thinking well i just you know i just don't want to pay stephen glaze I, I i could do this myself well i certainly wouldn't do it yourself um you know that that's that is the issue i mean even our guys there's so much it's hard to find a, a good carpenter that is also good with um metal and flashing you know bendy has a metal break no understand can make it look right as far as flashing where the roof wall connections flashing around all of the windows when you take it you know the trim off and you we flash it and we seal tape with the house wrap there's just a lot of details and they're so important i mean nailing the board up is the easiest part of the deal it's everything that goes on and and, and the prep work that goes into it before you actually nail the board to the wall that makes the difference and if it's not done right it's it's very very expensive um to to fix it and so uh, and you know, i definitely would not recommend and you don't know it needs to be fixed until it's, so it's huge, too late exactly problem yeah yeah, exactly. And, yep, yep. and then, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to think that, you know, the siding is bad. You're going to call the manufacturer out. The manufacturer is going to say, well, there's nothing wrong with the siding other than the fact that it wasn't installed anywhere near correct. And then, you, you know, you're going to find that um, it would have been a lot cheaper to hire Stephen Glaze, smart exteriors. <laughs> uh, you know, so I, I definitely wouldn't recommend that. Hire a professional, get it done, get it installed to manufacturer specifications. I have a, I have run into as a remodeling contractor, and I know you do too, lots and lots and lots of times I run into things uh, on houses where I know that the uh, somebody in charge at some point let the yard man do the repair work. <laughs> yeah. Repair job. And I know that because the prep wasn't right or you know, besides the fact it probably just looks awful. Um, I know that it, it just wasn't done by a professional and, um, and a professional getting paid a reasonable amount of money. And so, uh, I really, I really do understand 
what you're saying. You know, it's a little things like flashing around windows, flashing walls, understanding how, you know, water goes downhill, <laughs> little things yeah. like that. Um, let's talk about your book. Tell us about your book and why you wrote it. And, and, and let's talk about what it is. When I, I wrote a book, it's, it's the, uh, you know, Kansas city guide to, you know, siding and, um, siding replacement. And so basically what I did was I wanted to try and get, I, I do a lot of research in, into these different products. And I talked to the, the manufacturers reps and I talked to installers and, um, you know, I talked to, uh, you know, distributors and things and, 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 and then also my personal experience in working with these products. And so what I tried to do was just get some of this information, you know, out of my head and onto paper. And, and so we just went through the different types of siding and, and it's basically a, a very non biased uh, opinion um, of the pros and cons of each, of each product. And we go through, you know, steel siding, um, engineered wood, fiber cement, um, and then the, the kind of the newer stuff is like the PVC and, and, uh, things like that. And so, uh, and then natural just wood siding and, and, you know, it's not a, a sales book. It's a, it's a informational book to where you just go through and you can kind of read through it and, and see the pros and cons. And then based on your situation in your house and, uh, you know, maybe try and figure out what would be the best fit for you, for you. And, and so that's what I do. And I talk about, you know, cost in there and, 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 um, just pros and cons. It sounds and like it was, it sounds like a book that would probably be good for any market. Yeah, it, it, is, it is. Um, you know, obviously I, we're based out of Kansas city, so we, we named it that, but it absolutely is. And, and anyone can go and download it for free. Uh, they can go to my website. It's smart ext pros.com. Um, click on the siding tab and, and, uh, there's, there's a book that you can download for free, uh, PDF version and, 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 and read through it. Um, I've had a lot of people tell me that they found it very informational. Fantastic. We'll, we'll get that up on our screen. We're having a little technical difficulties this morning. We couldn't get our lower thirds uh, put in, uh, but we uh, we intended to put that up there for you, but we couldn't get that done this morning, but I will get it up there when I, when I edit the video. Super, uh, appreciate it. And, and well, I appreciate it. It's been a, a fantastic conversation and and uh, um, I'm glad you're doing well, and I appreciate all the, the information on the site. I'd like to do this again soon, uh, particularly with spring coming up. And I uh, would like to get some of your advice on some. You do other things as well. You do guttering and siding. And what, what all do you do on houses? So it's the X here. So our two big sellers are siding and gutter guards, gutter protection. Um, we also do windows and doors, um, you know, the gutters themselves um and roofing so this is this is about to become your busy time of year well i'm sure you're always busy but mm -hmm. springtime leading into summer is when a lot of these projects people start thinking about it particularly when it starts raining and absolutely it's snowing <laughs> yeah no, absolutely it's it's about to like you said we're always busy but uh it, it starts to get even more busy as we move into the uh move into the spring yeah yeah well well stephen glaze Thank you so much for sharing your time and knowledge with us today. We really do appreciate it. Alex, I appreciate it. It's a pleasure being on your show. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, bud. Bye. That was a fantastic interview. I um, I, I love the idea of uh, bringing this information to you, and we're going to keep doing it every week. Um, I hope that you can uh, check us out on YouTube or YouTube channel is Remodel Revolution. Go to our YouTube channel and share it and subscribe and share these videos. Also, check out our podcast, Remodel Revolution. We podcast on Spreaker, that, but we're on all of the podcast channels. There's not literally nobody that we're not that I know of. There could be somebody. But um, check us out on the podcast. Subscribe and follow us on the podcast uh, for our weekly podcast. It'll come right to you. Uh, until next week, this is Alex Guthrie signing off. You can catch Remodel Revolution anytime. Follow the show on the website, remodelrevolutionradio.com or on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest using the handle at Remodel Revolution Radio. You can always listen to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and tune in. And watch the show anytime on YouTube.